hello, 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 everyone. It is Teresa from Teresa Silhouettes, Spot for All Things Art, where I love sharing art from my heart. I apologize for being a few minutes late. Yes, um, those of you who live, well, I can't even say I live in an urban area because I really don't, but um, if you live anywhere around an urban area, I'm just gonna grab a piece of paper. Oh, it's not gonna work. Um, you will know that sometimes uh, traffic plays a huge factor in anywhere and everywhere you need to go. So whether it's an accident or these days road, much needed road, con road construction, you never, never know. So anyway, can you guess what I'm painting? Let me move my this so I can see. I'm gonna put a little high in here. Okay, we're all good. So, um, can you guess what I'm painting from the shape? I think you can. And by the way, talking about the shape, if um, you want the tracer for this wood cut out for this beehive, in case you haven't guessed, um, put tracer in the comments and I'd be happy to um, send it to you, okay? So I am just base coating with a really bright yellow for now. I'm gonna start mixing it up with um, a little golden yellow and then of course I'm gonna add details and our um, beehive would not be complete without some bumblebees, right? All right. I love this color. This is daffodil yellow. I thought it was yellow light, but it is daffodil yellow. It is a folk art color. Um, I pick my paint by the color, but I do in fact use mostly um, deco art or folk art paint for my paintings. Occasionally, there is an outlying color that I really love, and um, I will use that. But as far as brands, I use plaid, folk art, multi-surface paint, and enamels, and deco art um, paints and enamels. Lisa, Lisa, don't tell me you're watching from your beautiful vacation. If you are watching from your beautiful vacation, I hope you are absorbing some sunshine and you are doing so with a cold drink. Because lady, although it is summer and it is beautiful here on Long Island, I would love to be where you are right now. So, I don't know if your post was old and now you're back or you are in fact there. Hello, Tiffany, thanks for joining me. Okay, so let's, I'm trying to organize my windows here since I literally ladies and gentlemen, maybe, um, I just ran in the house like a crazy person to get on my live for you guys. I apologize again for being late, but here I am. So yes, this is in fact a bur uh, bird, this is in fact a beehive. Um, and if you want the tracer, you can put either tracer or beehive in the comments and I will be happy to send it to you. Okay. So I wanna put the opening down here, but I'm going to like a little bit, I'm not gonna really say sketch it in because my paint is still wet. I more or less made a groove. And I'm not gonna worry about my yellow needing to dry because I'm going over with black. If it was any other color, I would wait um, so not to get a muckety-muck mess. But since I'm just putting black over the yellow, I don't really have to wait. I can just come in here and do it. Do it, do it, do it. So what is new? If you're watching me from Craft Around the Clock and you're new to my page, let me know. I am Teresa from Teresa Silhouette Spot for All Things Art, where I love teaching creatives and crafters how to paint um, for fun and profit. Oh, so you are, oh, I bet it is, Lisa. Good for you, enjoy, enjoy, honey. And if I can bring a little sunshine and sparkle to your vacation, so be it. <laughs> so, 
Um, anyway, get rid of my pencil. I, I need to work neat, you guys. So I will have my paint out, my phone. I'm going to turn off sounds. Yes, okay. I need, I need to work neat. I know some people don't have to and some people don't need to. I need to. And usually after every project, I will straighten up. I will even go so far as to um, wash my brushes and my paint palette and then start over again. Yeah, sorry, I know. I'm a bit of a type A here, but that's okay, right? That's okay. Oops. Okay. So, um, what is going on? Did you guys enjoy Craft Round the Clock today? Honestly, today was one of those days where I did not get to see too many lives, but I will hop back on to see them. If you notice, I got a little quiet because sometimes when I'm trying to draw a bit of a straightish line, I need to concentrate, y'all. I finally, oh! <laughs> well, thank you, friend. I wonder how many other people really, really miss me and would love to see me paint live and just can't find me. So I am working on my beehive and I'm just adding in a few segments here to separate. And this is also helping me wait for my yellow to dry so I can go in and add some shading and some highlighting. And then of course, on top of the beehive, I'm gonna add some bees for us, okay? Bees are one of my favorite things to paint. They're um, quick and easy and are so cool once they're done. So how is the weather by you guys? Because I will say, um, oh, so this Cindy, my friend Cindy is sitting by the fire and she is in the upper, the UP. So if you're watching here from Michigan, you know what the UP is. Um, no, here on Long Island in New York, it is 93 degrees and it is already five o'clock at night. So yes, and I know that because I literally just pulled in, jumped out of the car, changed my shirt. Oh my God, you guys, I changed my shirt. Did you see? I'm all professional now. I got my own craft around the clock. TV, t-shirt. I feel like one of the gang. Aren't these beautiful color? And they're so my colors. So I am so excited. Thank you so much for our faithful leader, Tracy, um, who provided us with these shirts. I love mine and this is my first time wearing it. So yes, I zoomed in, I went to the bathroom and I hopped right on here. Oh, changed my shirt and hopped right on here to paint with y'all. Oops. So, hot and humid, oh, I bet, okay. So yeah, it was, we were having a bit of a heat wave here on Long Island. If this is your first time watching, please let me know and let me know where you're watching from. If um, you are catching me on the replay, because it is dinner time where you are, or you're just busy, or you're gonna come back later. Um, please put uh, replay in the comments as well. So this line's a little thicker than the rest, so I'm gonna just thicken up this one line here. And I'm sorry if I get quiet when I'm drawing straight lines. And some of you might be saying it's a little too thick, but I'm gonna show you how we fix that later. I'm in St. Mary's, Georgia. Hi, Levada. Is it Levada? Levada, Levada? Nice to meet you. My daughter lives in um, Atlanta, Georgia. She's been there for about 
three years almost. She will actually, she's coming here tomorrow. She's coming for the weekend tomorrow. There is a family party she's attending. Her grandfather is going to be 90. Imagine that. I can't imagine. But yes, her grandfather, her one grandfather lived to 89. And this is her other grandfather is going to be 90. Actually, her grandfather's going to be 90 tomorrow. And there's a party for him on Friday. So, um, pretty cool, huh? Good genes in this family for the most part. Okay. So now I want to add some shading. And you can do your shading with um, a darker color. I'm using yellow ochre for my shading. You can do it with um, a brown. I wouldn't probably do a black for this one. But... Um, I like the way this yellow ochre looks for the shading on my beehive. So, if you want to blend, you want your paints to be wet. You want your bottom, oh, picked up a little bit of black. I didn't want to blend that, but we'll fix that. I like... Um, I don't like to make mistakes, but I don't mind making mis mix making mistakes when I'm painting with y'all because I like to be able to show you guys how easy it is to fix. Sometimes people are like, oh, I'm so scared to paint. What are you scared of? It's paint. You're in the suburbs. Okay, hi, Jessica. Atlanta's about eight hours away. Oh, wow. Atlanta, uh, Georgia's a big state. You're in the suburbs, Jessica. My daughter's in the suburbs, too. Um, she lives over, actually, she lives over by the CDC, sort of, um, if you know where that is. I don't know if you're on the suburbs to the east or the suburbs to the west. She, I guess, is to the east. Anyway, so I was saying, I don't really mind when I'm painting with y'all if I make a mistake, because then I can show you guys how easy it is to fix because a lot of times I hear from students or prospective students, they're like, oh, I'm so scared. And I'm like, what are you scared of? It's paint. You can fix anything. Is it harder to fix some things? Yeah, is it harder to fix when black is underneath and you have to fix something? Yeah, of course it's harder to fix when there's black underneath. It's not impossible. I think sometimes we just have to say, you know, let's go for it. And that is it. So there's a couple of spots up there that I don't love, but that's okay. I'm waiting for them to dry. Oh, that's what I was saying before. So to blend, we want our paints wet. We want what's on our brush wet. We would prefer what's on our surface to be wet still, and that will give you the best blending. If you wanna fix something, you have to be so patient, wait for whatever it is that you want to fix to dry, and then come back in and paint over it. it the, the hardest part of fixing paint or fixing something that you've painted that you wanna change is being patient and letting it dry. The actual fixing of it is not that hard. Of course, it's easier to cover light with dark than it is to cover dark with light, but it can be done. So I just, I continued on to the rest of my project, and now I came back to that part which I didn't like and fixed it. I may go over it again, but right now, that's not too bad. And the same with um, this side. What I really could have done was gone in and done my shading before I added my black lines. But although you guys think I'm calm, cool, and collected, being late for y'all when I have a scheduled online live with my um, craft around the clock people uh, upsets me. So although, you know, I hopped on here, I'm like, hey y'all. No, I still want to be on time and do what I need to do. 
So let's just see if I missed anything. No siree. So I'm gonna give that a little bit. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna have my my gun here. I'm gonna take out my dry my new gun and give it a little shot here. So while I'm doing that, let's turn you guys around. So, um, oh, I can't reach. There we go, into the shot, right? So, if you have been following me, this was first time watching during Christmas in July. Thank you, Lily, nice to have you. Welcome back, it's nice to see you. So this is the floral bumblebee that I painted in June in my Zoom class. My premier Zoom classes are $9.95 a painter. You get a tracer and a supply list, and then we paint together. If you can't make it to the Zoom, that is totally okay, because I do ship out the um, recording. You can now get this in a kit on my website. If you want to paint the coordinating butterfly, I'll be painting this next Wednesday, which is what? July 27th at 7 p.m. You can sign up on my website. And again, you get the video recording, the tracer, and the supply list. Okay, I think that might be dry enough. Okay, let's switch you guys around. Okay, I think that's good. All right, where's my... So I don't want to um, go any further until I have this shading just the way I want it. And because I'm picking up a little too much black here, I have to go over it. So that side is so much better, right? Let's do this segment. See how much better a little patience and a little dry paint does? There we go. All righty. And then I just want to fix this one section over here. And then I will go back to that little bottom part again too. So our, my friend Lily here is new to my page. She caught me on Christmas in July this morning. I'm actually doing another Christmas in July um, this weekend with the Bust Creatives. So if you're looking for something to do this weekend, it is um, all day Saturday and Sunday from uh, 10 in the morning to seven o'clock at night. A lot of talented women, just like this group. A lot of talented women in the bus creatives. I'd like to surround myself. Watch your early today. I have to love your painting. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you. Welcome back. It's nice to see you again. I'm glad you're enjoying. Um, <laughs> what's I doing? Sometimes, honestly, you guys, sometimes when I look in the, in the, um, welcome Arkansas, when I look in my screen, I can pick up things that I need to tweak better than if I'm looking at my art like right here on top of it like this. So it's good in a way. I have this screen here. A lot of times in my paint parties, I will tell my painters to take a picture of their art. And then you can really see um, the details in it and what you might want to just um, adjust. I hate to say fix. I really do not like the word fix, honestly, because I always say it's art. It can't be wrong. So if it's not wrong, there isn't anything to fix per se. Um, but I understand if people want their stuff to look a certain way. So I get that. But I really, I need to come up with another word. If somebody can help me come up with another word, I usually say adjust, tweak, something like that. Welcome, Becky. Nice to see you. 
going to fix this now because I pulled over my shading a little bit with the black here. So if you are watching from my page, you may know who APHFM is. APHFM is my husband, almost perfect husband for me, who I love dearly and is a great cook. And right now, um, enhance, enhance, perfect. I'm gonna have to write that down because you know why? Later on, I'm gonna be like, you know, Somebody said a word. What was that word? It was a really good word. Does anybody remember that word? And it'll be gone. So I'm gonna get a little scrap paper right here and I'm gonna write and hands. There we go. You are right. That is an awesome word. I love it. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your input. So yes, so um, APHFM is my husband and he is inside making shepherd's pie. Yum, yum, yum. Let me get out a little white paint. I'm gonna add a little bit of detail, some shading and some more highlighting to my um, hive. And then I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna add a couple of buzzing bees because you know, what's a beehive without bees, right? Okay. So when I do these little highlights, low lights, there's nothing that needs to be perfect about them. If you follow me long enough, you may notice that I may often make you seasick because I am constantly turning my surface this way and that. I do not paint on an easel. I don't think I could paint on an easel. And I just feel like it is easier to move my surface than it is to try and contortion my body. There we go. So I've added a little bit of um, white to my borders and I'm just going to go back and I'm going to soften it up just by adding black and not as big but just um, on top of the white and when it's kind of, I mean I call it a low light because it's black. But when I'm adding the black, I just want it, it kind of just takes away from the brightness of the white. It adds a little bit more dimension to your project. And there we go. So funny, we have to paste these up. Oh, that is so funny. And pasties, it's called, it's a form of shepherd's pie and it's called pasties. That is funny. Okie dokie. So let me get out, I might need a different, well, this one might work. Uh, let me get a little bigger one. I'm gonna get this brush. Okay. All right, you guys ready? Let me show you what I have so far. So I have my hive, I added some shading, I added a little highlights to the outside. Now I'm gonna add a few um, bumblebees, okay? So I want to show you, it gives it a minute to dry and painting um, bumblebees is one of my favorite things to paint, okay? So I'm going to load up my brush with a really good amount of this yellow. And I'm actually mixing them because I don't want it as dark as my yellow ochre, but I don't want it as light as my surface because we want the bees to stand out, right? So I'm just adding a little bit of the yellow ochre to it. Maybe it's kicking it up like one more shade of yellow, okay? 
and I think I'm gonna put my first B here and I do that with just one stroke of my brush and yes I know that is hard for you to see right now especially from your angle um, but when I add the black stripes to it you'll be able to see it and I'm just gonna put one here for now too okay so we have one B body here and one here. And it kind of worked out with my shading. Okay, now I'm gonna use the back of my brush. I'm gonna come up in here and I'm going to give our B a nice big head. And I do that with the back of my brush and I use it like a pencil and it makes it a little bit rounder. Okay, now you can see them a little bit better. Put that away and I'm going to get out my liner brush. Okay, so when I use my liner brush, I dip it a little bit in water and just use like a drop of water in my paint just to thin up a little bit of my paint right here. We like to use our liner brush like a pencil. Um, I love uh, to teach art and I'm more than happy to share my tips and tricks and the way we use certain brushes with you guys and that is what I'm doing. So, I have my bees, and I'm gonna see if it's dry. Yep, it's dry, so I can rest my hand, and I'm just gonna start adding in, can you see that? Yeah, little strokes. So I'm going to start banding, banding. You know, our bees have these bands. This is a little wet here, with the black. I told you once I started adding the stripes you would be able to see my B right so there is one body and you might be saying oh my gosh she paints so fast that is the beauty of my style of painting I am a certified one stroke painter but I've kind of adapted that to my own style of painting which does happen to be a little bit on the quick and efficient side. So if you wanted to learn my techniques and a little bit of one stroke and the way I paint, um, I would love to have you join my group or one of my Zoom classes. And um, I would love to teach you. Are you gonna be able to like paint like a Speedy Gonzales the first time out? No, of course not but you will get the hang of it and you will be so surprised. Okay, so there are my bees. I'm just adding the two now. And while I have the black on my brush, honestly, I, this is one of the reasons why I like to do bees. I love adding these little lines. You know how when you see in, I guess, cartoons where bees have just been buzzing all around. This is like one of my, I know it's silly, right? One of my favorite things to do is add the buzz and bee lines. I know, I don't know why, but it is. And when I do these, um, I like to make sure that my surface is dry because these just have to be little tiny dashes and it helps that I have some place to rest my hand. Okay, so now we have our two Bs. If we order your kits, you've already painted, do we? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Jenny, if you order a kit on my website, um, let's talk. Yes, Jenny, if you order a kit on my website, my kits actually come with a pre-traced surface. So if it's um, wood, it's either etched or pre-traced by me or pre-traced canvas, all the paint you need, the brushes you need, and a link to a unlisted YouTube video. So yes, you have access to the video and the supplies you need. Um, I also put a list in there for what I don't provide. And that's stuff like paper towel, a watering, a cup for water, a table surface, just so when you're ready, 
and you get the kit and you're ready, you wanna see, okay, what do I have? What do I need? Hit the play button and you can get ready to paint. So I feel like I think of everything and so far somebody hasn't told me that I haven't. Um, so it's been working out, but yes, Jenny. Um, but like I said, if you want to join my Zoom, you get a supply list and a tracer. And then you strictly get the Zoom video and we do it live. Or if you've signed up um, for the Zoom, you'd have to get the kit extra or I will just send you the video after um, the class. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah, brushes are really important. Even So like when I teach my um, one stroke workshops, I have a one stroke workshop um, with the basics of one stroke on my website as well. It's three leaves and three flowers. When I teach my uh, one stroke workshops, I really, 93 here you guys, I'm very sorry. Um, I really encourage my painters to get these green handled plaid folk art one stroke brushes. You will have the best results with these brushes if you're doing the actual skill of one stroke. Um, so I do recommend them for my one stroke workshops, which I'm actually going to be having another workshop very soon. I think the end of August. Um, but other than that, yes, I never want people to um, pay a fortune for supplies or paint or brushes or whatever. Um, but there is something to be said for decent brushes and to have a, more success. It really is about having more success. And I want my painters to have more success. I want my painters, whether they paint with me in the group or paint with me here or paint with me after here or paint with me in Zoom, I want my painters to feel successful and proud to show up their designs. And if that means investing a little bit of money, I'm not talking about, you know, I'm, I'm not talking about $20 for one brush. No, 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 no. The starter pack of these brushes is um, $15.95, and I think it comes with five brushes. So what's that, $3 a brush? But yeah, just a couple of good brushes. And also I suggest, um, I know, like I have this huge bin here, and I know we're busy, and you know, people have a lot going on. I know sometimes we use cups and stuff, but it is really important to not leave your brushes in a cup of water bristles down for hours, days, whatever. That's the worst thing you can do to your brushes. So this bin that I have here, I don't know, let me turn you around. Even if I leave my brushes, which I really do, they kind of rest in here. So they're not really sitting on their points. They're just kind of floating in the water and sitting on their points. And I usually am good about cleaning my brushes. Um, in between projects, if not at least at the end of the night. Because you really don't want your brushes to sit in the water like this. That will damage your brushes and sometimes they're not fixable. But on that note, let's get back to our bees. So, and see so I have my, my enhance here. Thank you guys. So, I'm going to get a lot of white here. We need to add, our bees need wings, right? So I'm gonna add a lot of white and a tiny, look at that, tiny, tiny, tiny bit of black and work it in. More white and work it in, okay? And now I'm just gonna add some wings to my bees. Okay. And again, I'm turning my surface. I'm sticking my bee wings in there. I'm not even adding more black, you guys. When I go back and get more paint, I'm just adding white paint. I'm just picking up extra white paint for my wings. If I was doing a lot of these, I might have to pick up more black, but currently I really don't. Okay. There we go. Okay. 
so um, I'm not missing anything. So let me guys see if I missed any questions. Funny, enhanced, thank you so much. So here is one that I've already painted. It has this really cute bow, even though you guys are I'm a little bow challenged. I think this bow is cute. Somebody, if my friend from Interior Jewels is still on here, she may not think it's so cute. I think it's cute, but I am honest. My name is Teresa and I'm a little bow challenged. So, but yes, I have this cute little bow on here and how cute is that? So I will probably add a couple of more bees, but I know our next person is due up. And here is what I painted for you guys today. I will add, you know what, I'm going to add one more bead down here. This one's going to have three bees and I'm going to put it down here, but not right now. Okay, so thank you for joining me. I would love to have you guys paint with me. You can join um, Teresa's Spot for step-by-step -step acrylic art or and and or um, join me for my Zooms. This was last month's Zoom and it is now available in a kit with uh, the supply list, the tracer, and the video. And this is next week's Zoom. And you guys, surprise, 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 September Zoom is gonna be, oh wait, no, August Zoom is gonna be a dragonfly to go with these three. So it's gonna be a set of three, bumblebee, butterfly, and dragonfly. So this is next week's Zoom. Uh, supply list, tracer, and me on the video, okay? And then if you want the tracer for this, because you could always use it on a canvas, um, I will be happy to send it, put uh, tracer beehive in the comments and thank you guys i'm gonna go get me some shepherd's pie right now thank you for joining me i love you guys um don't forget to let me know where you're watching from and if you're catching me loved watching how to make things thank you carol thank you thank you thank you um too big what's too big Ugh. um anyway um if you're watching me on the replay please put hashtag replay I love this group, Craft Around the Clock, and um, it will be going to um, 10 o'clock tonight. So, lots more to watch, and I will catch up. Yes, I have been a little lame watching my fellow creators on Craft Around the Clock, but I will. Oh, the bow. You know what? You may be right. The bow is cute, but you may be right. It might be a little too big for this beehive. Thank you. Anyway, mwah. love you guys. I turned that off. You have a great night, and I'll talk to you all soon.